Hello, hi everyone. Welcome back to my YouTube channel and today we are going to solve one of the most classic problems named as trapping rainwater which is also classified as lead code hard in the most elegant way possible with just three lines of code snippets in linear time and constant space complexity. So let's get started. Now let's quickly understand the problem statement. So we are given a certain elevation map which we can think in the form of one dimensional buildings or one dimensional towers represented in the form of an array ranging from indexes 0 to 11 which means we have 12 different buildings of certain heights. So in this example we can see a tower or a building which is a standing on index 0 is of height 0, a tower which is a standing on index 1 is of height 1 and so on and so forth. Now whenever there is a rainfall these buildings will trap certain units of water and this is exactly what we need to compute. So this is the total amount of water that gets trapped whenever there is a rainfall among these buildings. Now let's take a sample example and take a random building, let's say a building which is a standing on top of index 6 having a height of 2. How many units of water is getting trapped onto this building? So that's where the logic begins and what we'll do is we'll try to find the tallest building on the left side including the current building which turns out to be the tower or the building which is a standing on index 3 having a height of 4. Now we'll apply the same logic and we'll find the tallest building on the right side including the current building which turns out to be the building or the tower which is a standing on index 7 having a height of 5. Now step 2 would be we have to find out which is the minimum of these two. So the minimum of these two tallest buildings is on the left side which is the building which is standing on index 3. To compute the amount of water that is getting trapped on the building which has been shown through arrow would be take the smallest of these two values which is 4 and subtract the current height of the building which is 2 and we will get the amount of water that is getting trapped which means 4 minus current height of the building which is 2 so 2 units of water is getting trapped. Now you can simply apply your intuition or very common logic that why we took 4 instead of 5 because anything beyond the length of 4 you know the water will not be trapped and water will simply overflow so that's why we have taken the smallest of them now one more quick thing which you need to remember which I'll be telling in the further slides is whenever we are taking the tower on the left side right if that is my consideration I would be calling that as I am filling the tower from the left side now let's say if the tallest building which we are considering is on the right side, I mean the smallest of these two, then I would say I am filling the building from the right side. Now this will get more clearer in the next slide. Now using the logic and reasoning that I've already explained in the previous slide, we are going to do a dry run on this elevation map to compute the total amount of water that is getting trapped among these buildings. So what we'll do is we'll take two variables. One is denoted as L now this pointer is pointing to the leftmost building and the other pointer which is R which is pointing to the rightmost building. Then we'll take two more variables which is left max and right max. Both are assigned with let's say minus infinity or int min which is more like the default value. And then there is a third variable answer and answer will compute the total amount of water that is getting trapped in this elevation map. So what we'll do is we'll try to compute the left max first and then the right max and then our algorithm begins. So left max will be computed with the help of the current building on the left which is at index L. So now my left max would be 0. My right max would be like what would be the maximum of int min minus infinity and the rightmost building at index R which is 1. So the value would be 1. Correct? Now which is the smallest of these two? Left max. So what we'll do? We'll try to fill this elevation map from the left side. It means 0 would be left max minus current height of the building at index L is equal to 0. So my answer would still remain as 0. So 0 unit of water gets tapped on building 0. And now my L pointer will move further to the right. Again we are going to compute the left max. Now my left max will be updated to 1, right? Because there is a new building of height 1. So including that current building, 
my left max would be 1. Now which is the smallest of these two? None. Both are equal. So I will write an algorithm in such a way that whenever these two values are equal, we'll try to fill the building from the right side. So now we'll try to fill from the right side. So what is the right max? 1 minus current height of the building? 1. So total amount of water that is trapped on building 11 is equal to 0. So my answer will continue to remain as 0. Now my R will move further to the left. Now again we'll compute the right max. My right max value will be 3. Now which one is the smallest of these two? 1 or 3? 1. So my left max is 1. So now we are going to fill the building from the left. Which means left max minus current height of the building which is 1 is equal to 0. So 0 unit of water is getting trapped on the building which is standing at index 1. So now my answer would still continue to be 0 and L will further move forward. Now we'll compute the left max again. Since the height of the building at index 2 is 0, so left max will continue to remain as 1. Which one is the smallest of these two? 1 or 3? 1. So now we are going to fill the building again from the left side. So left max minus current height of the building which is 0 is equal to 1. So now 1 unit of water is getting trapped on building 2. So now my answer will be updated to 1. Now L will again move forward. Now left max will be updated to 4. Which one is the smallest of these two? 3 which is the right max. Now again I will fill the building from the right side. So right max minus current height of the building 3 minus 3 turns out to be 0. So again my answer will continue to be 1 because no water is getting trapped on this particular building. Now R will further move to the left side. Right max will again be updated but it will remain as same because current height of the building is 1. Now which one is the smallest 3 or 4? So 3 is a smaller which means again we'll fill from the right side. So right max minus current height of the building which is 1 equal to 2. So it means 2 units of water is getting trapped on the building which is standing on R. So now my answer will be updated to 3. 1 plus 2 is equal to 3 till now. Now we'll further move to the left right and now we'll compute the right max again. So right max will again continue to remain as 3. Which one is the smallest left max or right max? Right max. So again we'll fill the building from the right side which is right max minus current height of the building 3 minus 3 equal to 0. So my answer will continue to remain as 3. Correct? So now what I've done is I have dry run up till this point. Now I will leave it as an exercise and I would leave it to your better judgment that you would have understood this entire algorithm that I was trying to dry run. And now you can possibly do all these steps until L crosses R. Okay, so now that we have already understood the algorithm and the solution to this, so we are going to code it up in the most elegant way possible. So int L is equal to zero, then the right index, which is going to be height size minus one, will take the left max and assign it to the initial value, which is int min. Then we'll also similarly take right max variable and assign it to int min again will take an answer variable which will compute the final result. Now we'll take a while loop starting with L until it crosses R. Right? We'll update the left max in such a way that max of left max comma height of whichever is the leftmost building. Similarly we'll compute the right max which is going to be max of right max comma height of right side right height of R. Now answer would be plus equal to, we'll keep on adding the answer. So whenever my left max is less than right max, right, as we have seen in the algorithm, I'm using a ternary operator. So the answer would be left max minus height of L. And I will also increment this pointer here, right? Just using the post increment operator. Otherwise I will use right max minus height of R and I will also decrement this pointer. And that's it, you are done. Just return this answer value. Let's quickly submit this solution that we have coded up. Hopefully this should give you the correct answer, yeah. And let's quickly submit this. Bingo. So this is the most elegant three line of pretty much code inside the while loop that solves this problem. And the time complexity of this solution would be O of n, which is linear. And the space complexity would be just O of 1 because there is no extra auxiliary space that we have taken.
By the way, I didn't intend to make a video on this problem initially because many people have solved this question on their YouTube channel, which is great. But what I found quite surprising is why people are writing the same code with complex if else statements when it could be refactored to a simple implementation like this, which is more elegant and quite easy to understand and visualize. I have solved hundreds of such problems with innovative solutions, which are neither fancy nor complex, but easy to grasp, understand and possibly gets imprinted in your mind without forgetting. So if you want me to bring more easier solutions to such problems and create more such videos, please do like, share and subscribe my channel so that I'll stay motivated. Till then, bye bye, take care.